Hi, Rory at Clodden Painting Studio here with a painting guide um, for one of Kerr's Dragoons. Um, this is for um, the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. Um, Kerr's Dragoons, rather no notorious in the aftermath of the Battle of Clodden, um, for taking part in a little bit of a hunting down and, and massacre of fleeing Jacobites. Um, I've primed the whole model with some army painter Leather Brown. Um, and that's going to form the main colour of um, the horse. Um, we'll paint the horse first and then move on to the um, Dragoon after that. Um, I've got some Citadel Contrast Black Templar and we're going to paint up all the, the straps around the horse. There's always one which just runs from the back of the saddle around the tail as well. With all the reins painted um, we'll do some detailing for the horse um, using Vallejo off-white. Gonna add socks around each of the ankles. And a bit of a star marking. Maybe also see that I use the black to do the eyes and the nostrils. Got some Vallejo Game Color Elfic Flesh uh, to do some dry brushing on the horse, concentrating on mane and tail and the reins. Um, but I'm also going to give the rider uh, a heavy dry brush with this as well, just so we've got a bit of a lighter um, base coat to work on. Now, a wash with some Ari Painter Strong Tone in a one to one dilution with quick shade mixing medium. It's going to help define the folds and the musculature of the horse and in the crevices in the mane and tail. A simple but effective method to quickly painting a horse there. Moving on to the Dragoon, I'm going to get his um, jacket um, and other red areas on the model painted. And the client has requested that I use the War Games Foundry um, British Red Coat Triad. So we'll start with the, the shade layer and I'll apply this all over the jacket. There are some lace details that will get covered in this but that's okay, we'll pick them out later. Smells the jacket, a couple of things to look out for is that the centre of the bed uh, roll or blanket roll, a little bit red in there, and also part of the centre of the decoration on the saddle cloth. Trying to avoid the turnbacks and facings and gauntlets, and they're going to be a lighter colour later. Another foundry colour that I'm going to need a lot of is buff leather. Um, all the saddle cloth details. As well as turnbacks on the coat. Blanket roll. Gauntlets straps all in buff for Kerr's Dragoons. Now the paints and foundry triads are quite translucent so even after two coats it's not really a solid colour over the jacket here. Um, however where it naturally pools in the recesses is a much more solid colour um, and that works well, um, in that we have another colour to go on here. So this is the mid-tone of the triad. Let's keep this to the raised areas, avoiding the recesses. And we're putting on another layer, but we're also getting a highlight. Um, and I will um, use the third in the triad, the light, um, to do the very highest points and get them highlighted as well. So the British Red Coat Triad has had all three layers. 
little detail is the saddle. Just see a bit behind the knees. And Vallejo saddle brown works nicely there. Contrast Black Templar is back out again. A few things to tackle. Boots and stirrup. At the end of the carbine here, and a leather strap holding it in position. The sword, give a base coat for the metallics to come later. Hat, avoiding the lace band. There's this cockade as well, cockade as well. Um, I'll do his hair black, obviously, and pick any colour there, um, including um, powdered, I suppose. Scabbard. And a couple of straps on the roll here. Continuing the theme of contrast paint, some gore grunt of fur. will help colour in our carbine. Came to realise I neglected to mention a couple of areas to hit with the contrast paints. Um, we've got some pistols. Um, so the end of the holster, some of the black, um, and the butts of the guns, the gore grunt of fur, um, and also the system of the reins, which again done with the black templar. Um, now for a bit of dry brushing again with the elfic flesh, getting some highlights on the, the black and um, also um, all the buff as well. There's some lace details to pick out, um, first one being the hat rim, got some Vallejo off-white, um, and then on the coat we've got some Place around the buttons. Very center of the decoration on the saddle. And I will also use the off white at this stage to lighten the face. So we're going to use some contrast gullum and flesh for the skin later on. There's also some white lace on the shoulder to pick out with the previous step. The saddlecloth has some detailing to pick out. I'm using coat d'arms black green um, and that's a stripe down the center of the edge. Um, it's also a wreath-like design. And I'm also using this to pick out the uh, GR George Rex insignia. So continue the green line all the way around the saddle cloth details. Um, as I said before, use some I was going to use some Gullman flesh on the skin of the face. For metallics, I've got some Army Painter plate mail metal. I start using this on all the areas of steel. Now we do have some buttons alongside the lace to pick out. What I will try and do is leave the black showing in the recesses on the sword, just for that nice bit of shading with no effort. Those are areas on the carbine to do stirrups, some of the horse tack as well. And we do need to hold on to some uh, brass later uh, to do this buckle on the strap. But the other metalwork areas are as steel. I have broken out my ancient pot of mithril silver from Games Workshop. 
um, storm horse silver is probably the modern equivalent um, and I will just do a little highlight or two on my sword um, and an ever so light coat along the top of the hat um, it was silver lacing and I think just adding this for a wee sparkle just catches the light a bit to do a little highlight on metallics. Got my battered old brush uh, out again with some Army Painter Soft Tone, thinned one to one with Quick Shade Medium. And this is just going to help settle in the deepest recesses on the models without changing the shade of things too much, um, as you might get with a, a strong tone or a dark tone. It'll help define the edges of the, the lace um, and where the straps across the body and where the raised and recessed areas are on the saddle. And here's a, a quick look at the finished model. Um, I'll give it a spin manually. I must invest in a automatic Lazy Susan for this sort of thing. I don't know cavalry for the Jacobite Rising is a bit niche um, but it's a, a nice uh, change of pace from the usual Napoleonics and it's a lovely period to get into. Um, this miniature is from uh, Krantara um, not sure if I mentioned that at the start. And he'll be getting a uh, varnish and will be sent off to the client in due course. Um, thanks for watching. Speak to you there. Bye bye.